Wait just a second. We can't start here. You're gonna miss the good bits. That looks sick, right? Well, there's a lot more where that came from. The Punisher is one of my favourite Marvel characters along with Daredevil. I think it's because they're both human, but they can still go toe to toe with the big dogs because they're stubborn motherfuckers. They just won't die. Also, my favourite thing about this book, apart from how violent and sick it is, it would be the artist. His name is Juan Ferreira. I hope I'm saying that right. His art style is one of the best in the business right now. I'd say he's second or third to only to the likes of Alex Ross and such. His Daily Neighbourhood Spider-Man was so creepy and spine tingling. It definitely left me wanting more and this book definitely delivers. Now back to the Punisher. Punisher's Kill Crew is a tie in to the War of the Realms event storyline that was going on with Thor back then in 2019. But in my opinion, the story stands on its own two feet. You can read it as a standalone Punisher title and you'll get the same enjoyment out of it. But enough chit chat. Let's dig in. This takes place a few summers ago in New York City. The world has always been hell to Frank Castle. But right now, hell is just a bit too hot. But Frank has always loved the feeling of fire. Now whether that heat came from the butt of his Desert Eagle or the six round chamber of a Gatling gun, Frank didn't care or know where these monsters came from. But what he does know is where they're about to end up. Dead. But saving everyone is impossible. And unfortunately for a man named Mr. Jones, this fire was too hot for even Frank Castle to put out. But there's one thing about Frank that most people get wrong. Yeah, he's murdered and maimed thousands of people, of course. But he never forgets his morals and once he gives you his word, that's final. He'll die before he lets another innocent person perish without the perpetrator getting, well, punished. A portal is open in downtown New York and heading towards it is a towering angry god of murder. And a blue giant, of course. <laughs> Frank empties his clip into the blue moving mountain, but he gets through before Dr. Strange stops him in his tracks. No person born of Earth can pass through, but he'll leave the monsters to Frank in the future, Strange says confidently. Later, Frank is consoling Mr. Jones about the loss of his family, as he too knows this pain. Frank is plotting and trying to find out a way to reach Jotunheim, the land of the giants. And Mr. Jones introduces Frank to some of his friends. It's a van full of kids. Now I know it looks dodgy, but wait. These kids have been left orphaned by the war raging through the city. And they're hungry. So Frank brings them for some pizza and ice cream. But that's when they start to draw the monsters that killed their parents. He gets them all to do this and promises them he will return with proof of death of all these monsters. He gives them his word. He walks to Central Park and spots a skeleton-like figure kidnapping a woman. He blows him away, of course. But his helmet falls at his feet. It's a nice helmet, if I do say so myself. But before long, the tree monster from the kid's picture shows his face. And he unleashes that bit of heat he has in his fullness of a heart. And then a grenade, for good measure. Later, outside Doctor Strange's home, Thor's chariot and goat is parked in a red zone and is about to receive a ticket. But Frank shows up and gives it an apple. He's entrusting this creature with his quest for vengeance. His pursuit of the frost giant, Kasikla? I don't know whether I'm saying that right or not, but who cares? and other various monsters that infested his city won't be easy. But nobody escapes the Punisher's hit list. On Svartalheim, elves gather around a campfire and long for the days of their leader Malekith, who was defeated only shortly before by Thor. They pray that they never see another human again. Frank Castle is there to grant them their wish. One of them knocks his gun away, thinking that would stop the one-man army that is Frank Castle. <laughs> he 
he leaves one alive, an old navigator. He grabs him by the ankles and chains him up. He's found his compass. He straps him to the front of his van and away they go. Yesterday when he was getting the kids to draw their villains, one of them drew what seems to be a shark with robot arms and legs. As he is riding, he shows the drawing to the elf. The elf mentions that it looks like a half-human hybrid, something the high evolutionary would conjure up on Counter-Earth. First stop, Counter-Earth it is. They arrive and he just begins to unleash the hounds on every living thing there. He thinks about nuking this planet one day in the future while he goes on a mortar spree. He stumbles upon the shark bot, and surprisingly, it has Foggy Nelson in a cage. Foggy, aka Daredevil's best friend. I guess you could say he's used to the devil coming to his aid. The difference is, this one doesn't dress up in red spandex and do flips around New York City. This devil doesn't care about psalms or songs of prayer. His religion is the sweet sound of bullets and... Explosions. He rescues Foggy and snaps a pic for proof for the kids. Him and Foggy continue on into space to continue his future of pain and punishment. But little does he know, his future just passed him up without even stopping to catch up. That's because Frank Castle is the cosmic ghost rider in the future. They arrive on Jotunheim with a bang. He finds out that the frost giants are keeping humans as food and he's not happy. But this human isn't what you would call a homo sapien. More maybe homo superior more than anything else. Enter the Juggernaut. Frank Castle needs a distraction and Foggy is the perfect bait. The Juggernaut can't take much more. So he picks up a sword and goes to walk. Well, sort of. They immediately ready an attack. But Frank loads a fresh ball of fire for them to gulp down. But it does nothing. They zap him and Foggy makes a run for it. But in the chaos, Juggernaut breaks free. Making light walk with the big blue toe rags. Drowning Foggy in blue guts in the process. And Frank only has one rule. Don't puke in the van. He needs a ride home and Frank obliges. But there's more blue idiots in their way. <laughs> Juggernaut sends their legs back to Yggdrasil. A.K.A. the Tree of Life. But Frank can't miss out on the action. And well, let's just say that... That frost giant... Wishes he was never born. He hacks and slashes. Even Foggy gets in on the action. And so does the goat. <laughs> the giant laughs in the face of what he thinks is a weak, feeble animal. But this is no ordinary goat. The God of Thunder chose this goat as his companion for a reason. Juggernaut grabs an icicle and launches it into one of the chests. He's down. Now it's Frank's turn. Where is he? He screams. As he jabs his sword into the giant's disgusting fingernail. Ugh. That bit made me a bit queasy now. And apparently it made the Juggernaut queasy too, as he projectile vomits all over Foggy. In Frank's van. Uh oh. Frank gets the info from the giant and he learns that he's locked himself away behind a door made from the metal of Thor's hammer, Uru Metal. Then when he gets his answer, he finishes off the last one. He returns to the van to find his number one rule broken, and he's not happy. He tells the Juggernaut what the mission is, and Juggernaut breaks down crying. He's in. Foggy comes up with a great idea. The ebony blade can cut anything. They need to find the Black Knight. To earth and step on it. Foggy phones Matt and he's at the Avengers mansion chowing down when he informs Foggy that Thor said the Black Knight chased some elves all the way to Svartalheim. To Svartalheim it is then. Foggy was so close to home but his journey's not finished yet. On Svartalheim, Dane Whitman is chopping up dark elves like it's no one's business when the kill crew enters with a bang. Get in, we're going hunting, Frank says. 
But Dane says he's on his own mission right now. He can't. But Juggernaut shows him the drawings that the kids drew. Now he can't say no. The kill crew is complete. Now they head to a place called Nowhere. It's where one of their targets is hiding now. This will help little Eban sleep better at night. Frank laughs. Before they go on to the next kill, they stop for some alien chicken bat wing. Some sort of meat, anyway. And then away they go to take on a fire demon. But Frank's sword does nothing. But the demon's neck is no match for the ebony blade. They find some diamonds along the way and agree that it should go to the orphans. They think they're done, but Frank reminds them. One last name on the list. On Nidavellir, this is where Whitman comes in. Inside, the giants are relaxed, chomping down on a few humans. They think they're safe. Until... What? I don't hear anything... Time to die! The giant screams picking up a big gun and retaliating, but misses. The gang enact revenge to the fullest extent. Especially Frank. But Juggernaut gets hit and the crew goes down. Frank's out and in the clutches of his foe. It's all down to Foggy. But he retreats in the van, leaving his ragtag team to die. He's chased this big, dumb, blue ice giant halfway across the galaxy, and now he's at his mercy. Juggernaut's down, so is Dane, and Foggy is nowhere to be seen. All is lost. Or is it? The giant begins preparations to roast them alive, but Juggernaut sees something in the distance. It's Foggy and he's on a crash course for the tower with an asteroid attached to the goat's skull. Bombs away, he screams. Kaboom. He lands and grabs the blade, releasing the mutant powerhouse from his icy cage. Frank and Dane are free, but it looks to be all over, until Big Jug steps in. Foggy throws Frank the blade. Juggernaut gives him a boost. This is for the Jones family, he screams. Some people master ballet or ice skating, and those things fill one's soul with pleasure and grace. Well, there's only one thing in the world that gives Frank Castle pleasure and grace, and that's a fucking great kill. And always, you have to double tap for good measure. Can we go home now? Yes, Frank says. They land back in New York and go their separate ways. But they will always remember this time together. The time they spent as the kill crew. Foggy and Frank return to the kids for another round of pizza and ice cream. And the one thing about Frank Castle that you need to know before it's all said and done, when Frank Castle gives you his word, just know he fucking means it. Well, that's it everyone. I really enjoyed this little quick 1-5 to five issues of uh, Frank Castle, Punisher, Kill Crew. The art is amazing as I said earlier. And it's just a little very easily digestible story that I think everyone will like. If you like the Punisher, but that is. But yeah, that's it. Like, comment, subscribe. Comment down below, let me know what you think. Peace.